My name is Matt Bennett and this is my 1972 BWC. The Beetle was my first car, that, that actual shell was my first ever car and it was at a, a unit that we had and I was sort of restoring it and I had a BMW there, one of my skid cars and that was knackered as they all were at the time and I didn't have much money, we got kicked out so I cut the BMW up because they were worthless at that point, it wasn't worth it and the Beetle was worth more and then I put the Beetle shell on top of the BMW chassis, took it to our new unit and then decided that that was a good idea and then an RB25 Beetle BMW. My inspiration for the car was I've always grown up with a motorsport background. So my uncle was a professional motocross racer, my mum's raced bikes. Like I've always been surrounded by petrol heads pretty much. So anything that I could make or I could hop on that would scare me, I was all over it. So as soon as that idea got stuck in my head and what it could become, and I, it just excited me. So I continued to build it and this is what I've got. And every time I get in it, I'm like a kid, it's great. I built it for fun. I didn't really build it to compete or anything like that. It's, it can't compete because of the chassis alterations and everything. So it's just, uh, it's not really a road car. It can be on the road for little bits and pieces, but it's not really for that. It's a track and hill climb car really is what it's built for. Probably more leaning towards hill climb to be fair. Short ratio, short wheelbase is, is for that. To, to drive it, it's, it's pretty scary. It's, it kicks in when the boost kicks in. It just everything at the back gets light and it just starts moving around and it's fast. It's because it just weighs nothing and the way that the boost curve comes in with this new setup, it's it's phenomenal. Before it was uncontrollably scary because the boost just came too quick. It just light the tires up and it was undriveable. But now you can feel it and it, it picks up speed fast. It's good. Uh, my favourite show to go to is probably Players, or re most recently anyway. Last year I, I really enjoyed the show, they had a really good mix of cars there. And it's at Goodwood, which I think is probably one of the better places to go anyway. And I'm pretty excited for this year because I've got track time there also. So I get to enjoy the show and go out on the track and finally earth it around Goodwood. It's been one of those tracks that I've always wanted to drive, so I'm pretty excited for that. <laughs> The car made 505 at the wheels, um, internally gated. So before I was struggling with internally, externally gated, but now, so that's fully track. Like I don't have to mess around with it. It makes 505 at the wheels and no noise complaints, nothing. So I'm really happy with that. Future plans for the car. <laughs> I'll, uh, I will spray it at some point. I get this question a lot about the, the patina and this, that and the other. Um, I will spray it, but at the moment it's quite nice to have it rough um, because I can just, I can hurt it, it doesn't matter. I can thrash it about, not worry about stone chips. And if I need to put a bracket on somewhere, I can do that. And it's just, I don't have to worry about anything at the moment. So I want to test it and then get it fully happy. And then I'll strip it all back to a bare shell and then get it sprayed in some lovely paint job and put it all back together again. And then it'll be a full on show car and I'll probably never drive it on track again. <laughs> I like rat rods. I do like American cars and stuff like that. So a lot of it comes from that. Hence why a lot of like the rustic spot wells and all that kind of thing are all done that way because I like that style. I like all sorts of things. I like touring cars. And so it just comes from different places. A lot of inspiration for the car has come from a lot of different places and like well out of the way of what that is and then just brought to, to one thing and I think it's worked I think it was cool
the, the main modifications to the car. So the BMW that I had, it was a coupe. So it was far too long to start off with. So I had to take 12 inches of chassis out the middle of it and then make all that work again. So that was difficult in itself. Um, and then all of the hurdles that I've had to jump in teaching myself how to do everything. So like the, the roll cage was very hard. It was the first roll cage I've ever made and it's an unbelievably tight space. So there's no tolerance for anything. I needed everything to be as tight as it could be so I could fit, like I'm a big guy. I needed every, every inch that I could get. So that was hard work. Um, making the BMW subframe and everything line up to where the gearbox was and making sure all the angles were, I turned into a massive nerd basically just researching everything, trying to figure out what was best for what. And then after it started, it just became a big snowball effect of constantly chasing problems and figuring out why they're happening and advancing it. So I'm now at a stage where I think I'm hopefully past all that, but it has been a struggle. I started building it six years ago. Um, it went to my nans for two years or so, which I didn't really do anything to it because I didn't have any time. It was in Hastings, it was quite a long drive. So it basically just sat there. So it's taken me four years to build and that's all just evenings and weekends really.